już cały bieg ten. Sunował nie uma, a ulatę nie wotida, a terus mama do mate bia, terus sobre la boti, usi sunuba. East Timor is self-destructing. These are the ruins of Tasitolo, a suburb in the capital Dili. What happened here four weeks ago sparked the political crisis that grips East Timor today. On April the 24th, nearly 600 former soldiers marched on Dili. All were from the Lorumonu people the ethnic group based in the west of this tiny country. They'd gone on strike at the beginning of March, complaining of discrimination in the army. Prime Minister Mari Al-Khatiri responded by sacking the rebellious soldiers, nearly a third of the armed forces. <laughs> On April the 28th, groups of Lorumono youths, sympathetic to the former soldiers, went on a rampage through Dili. <laughs> Government forces opened fire, killing five. Many of the rebel soldiers and their supporters then retreated to the suburb of Tasitolo. The army sealed off the suburb and shooting was heard throughout the night. The rebel soldiers say that 60 people were killed, but this is yet to be investigated. Claims of a massacre prompted the defection of 25 military police, along with their commander, Alfredo Reynaldo. Last Tuesday, my East Timorese assistant, Jose Bello, and I traveled into the hills just outside of Dili in search of Ronaldo. I'd been tipped off that the rebel commander had come to the outskirts of the capital and might agree to be interviewed. Until today, he'd been holed up 40 kilometers to the south. But in a seriously provocative act, he moved his heavily armed men to this ridge overlooking Dili. Some people are going to be surprised or even worried that you're standing just above Dili here. People are saying that you're, you're going to go down and attack parliament. There's, there's lots of, lots of uh, speculation. What is my intention to attack the parliament? I don't know. And also, why I go down to attack in Delhi? If I want to attack in Delhi, I attack the Delhi before I left. But who I'm going to attack? I mostly here is to defend myself from any threat or anybody who want to harm me and to protect the others that want to defend the justice as I am here. Why I'm here? Because I want to see the justice. In just a few hours' time, Alfredo Ronaldo would be labelled public enemy number one by East Timor's Prime Minister. But he told me he hoped the split in the armed forces could be resolved peacefully. Does this problem have a solution or is it already too late? It's not too late. Never too late for any solution. It's that too late for East Timor to have independence after 24 years. It's only everything has to end it in the table by dialogue. Part way through our interview, it starts to rain, although it doesn't seem to bother Ronaldo. But we say rain is the civilian, doesn't wet the military. <laughs> it's just the camera I'm worried about. <laughs> we find some shelter, and when we continue, Ronaldo delivers an important message for Australia. Then if we need the support from the foreign country, more than closest neighbor like Australia. 
and region mostly and international from the UN. UN is uh, still have a representative here uh, because everybody here is very suspicious with the, what's going on and what will be the end of it because they have a very uh, ugly background and people know how to use a weapon, carry a weapon, how to shoot, how to kill them. And this is dangerous, very dangerous. Anything else? Good luck. Prophetic words. Only a few minutes later, Ronaldo and his men are on high alert. Government soldiers, the FFDTL, have been spotted by Ronaldo's sentries just down the road. Function your camera, no worries. Uh, tell me what's happening. The FFDTL coming after us. Just now? Yeah. Can you see them? Oh, yes, there. Oh, how many people? Harry Soaring, Harry Soaring, Harry Soaring. Siri Soaring, Siri Soaring. There's three men hiding in the side. One is still standing. I can see them and I didn't take a shot. The Australian Defence Force identified Alfredo Ronaldo as a future military leader when he attended training in Canberra. Today, he has a group of around 25 heavily armed men with him. What, what was happening there? They didn't want to redraw. You gave them the opportunity and they refused? I give them so many times. I give them to go back, stay as they are, so we can talk, we can see them talk. We not come here to fight against them. We come here to protect the people. Yesterday they come here to shoot. We are not here to fight. But they come after us. What purpose? How many are there? We don't know. There are many. No, I think, yeah. The government later said that the soldiers that Ronaldo fired on were unarmed. But within minutes, they're firing back. Be careful the grenade. They was in the grenade lawn. Should we go? Uh, no, you're not safe to go. Stay stay there. You're not safe to go here. You, there's your ammunition crossing around. You shot one? I think so. It's not moving anymore. We have to get out here. What do you, how do, where do we go then? Huh? We will be trapped here, I think.
Nih, nih. Kontrol dulu ya. Okay. Come on, how are you? I asked them to stop. I hope they can return to where they come from. To so stop shooting. Maintain position on the fighting. With more grenades falling around us, it's time to make a dash for safety. Oh, Philip. I'll go up, up, yeah? This seems like a pretty bad escalation. I'm not really sure which which way to run at the moment because I don't know my way around here. Huh? Oh, fuck. We should we shouldn't go with them. Huh? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. We're right in the middle of this here, this is bad. No worries, mate. It's okay. Pretty serious, though. Yeah. Huh? Oh, serious. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, sir. I call Foreign Minister José Ramos Horta and a member of Parliament, Leandro Isaac, to ask for help. Both men had told me they'd been negotiating with Ronaldo. I just spoke to someone in Dili, to Leandro Isaac, and he told us to call the Australian Embassy I don't actually have the number on me. So it's a bit awkward because I don't know if they're chasing us. And he said that the army don't want the world to know that they're firing on Alfredo because Alfredo was organizing a peaceful dialogue with Ramos Horta and with Leandrisa. And Shanana is supposed to be scheduled in a couple of days. But it doesn't look good at the moment for that to go ahead. You can see how close we are to Dili. It's just up on the hill behind. All of the civilians I'm with here helping us to get away, showing us the path out of here, plus the Alfredo's men are hoping that this is the catalyst that brings Australian police uh, peacekeepers into East Timor. At the moment, I'm all right. I'm with three of Alfredo's guys. We're being walked away from it. There's still sporadic gunfire going on down below. Hello? Hello? Did you hear me? I just had a call from the Australian Embassy in Dili, and they've advised us to leave Alfredo's soldiers. Uh, they're the ones that have brought us up here, but they've said that we should leave them and, and uh, hook up with some local villagers, go into a into a local village around here, just sit and wait it out. But the problem is that um, the, the local villages around here are, are all empty because they've all left, scared for their lives. During our four-hour walk to safety, we're joined by dozens of refugees from nearby villages. They must have thought the days of packing up the rice pot and the bedroll were long gone. 
A mere six years after finally gaining independence, history seems to be repeating itself. Frightened and uncertain, and once again fleeing for their lives. Some of Ronaldo's troops come up the hill, carrying an injured colleague. He later dies back at their base. It's now raining heavily, and the path is turning to mud. If it's possible, uh, we want to, we ask to the UN peacekeeping force to come to Timor to maintain the security mm. because we have no security in here. This is a this is a real escalation of the problem, isn't it? A real yes, getting worse. Yeah. Because of the stupid of the leader, leader of the force, the very force, the very stupid man, and now the situation is very bad in Delhi, and we hope that the peacekeeping force uh, come to Istimo as soon as possible to maintain the security. Thank you very much. Thank you. After four hours, we finally arrive at a small hospital where the Australian Embassy has promised to send a car. While we are waiting, the gunfire seems to be getting closer, and I feel for the villagers that I'm leaving behind. They have no friends in high places to call for help. Your taxi has arrived. Travelling back to Dili, apart from the flooding, it all seems quite normal, but not for long. The fighting, just a few kilometres away, is already spreading, ending any hopes for reconciliation. The next morning, on Wednesday, the Prime Minister, Mari al Katiri is called to the President's office. Prime Minister. It was later reported that President Janana Gushmao wanted to invite foreign peacekeepers and argued with al Katiri, who was resisting. Later in the day, both leaders issue separate orders to the army, adding to the confusion over who is in charge. It soon becomes clear that significant numbers of police are defecting to the rebels. But United Nations police advisers refuse to discuss the unfolding crisis. No comments. No comments, no problem. General Anis Bajwa is deputy head of the United Nations mission here, and he's trying to figure out what's happening. So what do you know now at the moment? What's happening? Oh, I'm just here to find out. Yeah, we met in the morning. Yeah. But, but do tell me, uh, 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 what, uh, who are you representing? SBS Television. SBS, yeah. Okay. Well, was it you yesterday uh, up in the mountains? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was yourself. We need to talk about that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, we will. Uh, or I'll get somebody to... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a particularly difficult time for the UN. It works closely with both the army and police, who are now engaged in open warfare. Is Brigadier General Tao Matan Ruak still in control of the armed forces? I'm, I'm trying to call him. I don't know. I'm, I, oh, he must be. I'm trying to call him. His number is busy. Yeah. Hello, General. Yes, good morning. Uh, it is, it is uh, General Bajwa. Uh, yes, good morning. General, uh, are, are you at the headquarters? If you are, I'm... I'm uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, okay. But your operation is going on over there. Uh -huh. The armed forces chief, Brigadier General Taur Matan Ruak, explains he's busy okay. leading the operations against Ronaldo. Yeah, no, no, I will, I will not talk to you uh, now. I will talk to you later in the afternoon sometime, okay? 
Yeah, I'm bummed. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. More, more gunshots. But while the army commander is fighting renegade soldiers, a few kilometers away, his own home is under attack by a different group of rebel police. Hello? I'm actually in the middle of a bloody, there's a gun battle going on pretty close by. I don't know if you can hear the shots. Yeah, they're, they're attacking, I think they're attacking the armed forces chief's um, house. It's, we've just arrived, but the, the shots have been ringing out now for about 20 minutes on the hill behind. I'm just seeing a, a, a car speeding down the hill now. It's an ambulance, and apparently one of the ambulances was shot at. It's not long before government soldiers arrive and move in to defend their commander's home. It's three o'clock Wednesday afternoon. And with the battle around the army chief's house still raging, the president has invited all the foreign ambassadors to his office. When the Indonesians arrive, I can't help but wonder what they make of the crisis in their former province. The Australians are next to arrive. Everyone here suspects the purpose of the meeting is to call for foreign peacekeepers. But when the diplomats depart half an hour later, they're not giving anything away. Is the meeting over? The meeting finished? Yeah, yeah. just finished. A decision yeah. been made? Uh, yeah, but maybe you should talk to them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Australia's ambassador is no more forthcoming. A few hours later, the decision to invite peacekeepers is finally made public. Australia, New Zealand, Portugal and Malaysia all agree to send troops. It's Thursday, two days after the firefight in the hills, and relations between army and police have now hit an unimaginable low. An amateur cameraman filmed these police officers minutes after they were gunned down by government soldiers. They'd been under siege in police headquarters all morning and were finally escorted out after the UN took their weapons away and guaranteed their safe passage. Police officer Lucia Fatima Jimenez believed the UN could protect her from the soldiers. Twenty-four hours after the invitation for international help, the appearance of two Australian warships is well received. Certainly a sight for sore eyes, that ship. <laughs> Waiting a few days for that after today's Gun battles. Yeah, what have you been doing today? Hiding mostly inside the hotel in yep. my office. It's uh, got a lot of machine gun fire just outside the office. 
So this is good, and it's calmed everything down, so it's really great. <laughs> but the soldiers were too late to save the family who lived in this house. <laughs> A woman and four of her children, aged from three to fourteen, burned to death here as the first soldiers were arriving. The house was targeted in an act of revenge. The woman who lived here was related by marriage to East Timor's police minister, Rogerio Lobato. Lobato comes from the west of the country, where most of the rebels are from. The mob that torched this house are from the east and were enraged when police defected to the rebels. A deadly cycle of revenge has begun. You know, for me, it's something that's uh, unbelievable. To know why we can kill each other in one day. And it's like, it's, it's happening in a sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's very, it's very sad that, you know, why we, we are, t we Timorese, we have to find each other. Mm -hmm. And then, it's a big responsibility for the leaders, I think. Mm -hmm. Leaders of this country, that they should reflect themselves, do a big reflection to, you know, why these things happen. That it's not easy, you know, to govern this country. We have to be, you know, we should find a good leader to govern this country. Otherwise, these things will continue to happen. It's a tragedy that Australian peacekeepers are required once more on the streets of Dili. Foreign troops may eventually be able to re-establish peace, but to reunite East Timor, its leaders need to win back their people's trust, and that will prove much harder. Well, it's also a